get my timer on so I can know how long I've got. Hello. Um, so usually I make things with computers, um, and on the rare, rare times I stand on a stage, it will be to show my work with slides and a pitch. But I don't really have any work to show you this evening. I don't have a TED-style, neatly packaged idea worth spreading. I've been asked to come and share some thoughts based on my experience as a young practitioner in today's world, which I'm quite excited about. I got, I've got opinions, I reckon. But I'm not used to just standing here and articulating thoughts, so I've written them all down. Also, as it's based on my experiences, I need to talk about some context, which I'm afraid means I have to talk about myself for a bit. I hope you understand it's important for my talk and not just my vanity. So that's all the apologizing out of the way. I went to a London comprehensive called Woodbridge High School. Ofsted reports had it hovering around average among similar schools. That's about 60% of students getting five A to C's at GCSE. Put frankly, the education was awful. I can list everything I learned from the curriculum in my time there. A little bit about the war poets from a teacher who was quickly seduced into the private education sector, some Cold War history, and that using your year eight speech to speak out against homophobia gets you beaten up. I looked forward to being a grown up, being my own boss and playing with the real world. I was incredibly fortunate. At the age of 13, from my comfortable bedroom, I began to tinker with computers. I got interested in a new technology called Ruby on Rails, an opinionated framework for making interactive websites around which more intelligent and experienced people openly discussed and shared best practices and code. I learned along with them, and within a couple of years, it turned out that knowledge was that knowledge was very profitable. Working as a programmer enabled me to drop out of my A-levels, sidestep the recession, the generational debt, and the joblessness being handed to all of my peers, and was able to work in whatever industry or company intrigued me. By the time I was 23, I had worked in business continuity, the music industry, media, advertising, and design. It was like industrial tourism, a never-ending series of internships, except for me, I was valued and got paid, sometimes very well. You might think that the BBC News website article narrative here charts how a boy in his 20s taught himself to code, left school and founded, founded a dynamic startup. It could have been an iPhone app that sold a few million copies, an industry-disrupting platform for whatever, or, if I was feeling fluffy and socially conscious, a social innovation startup, perhaps enabling homeless people to become just like me, a self-reliant, self-starting entrepreneur. All very tempting, but these saccharine narratives of geek boy done good carry a political message that I'm not comfortable with. People are incredibly excited in and outside of the tech world and in the mainstream media about specific aspects of the tech world. They are fascinated by the profits, newness, and the political issues of data protection surveillance. But beyond this, there is a severe lack of debate about how the tech community participates in our social economic context. Because for all the excitement around the new powers of technology, the tech community became one of the most powerful practitioners of the neoliberal agenda, with only some of us noticing. If you look around at the most hyped areas of the technology industry, at best, you'll see no government, and at worst, an active interest in shrinking it. On the screen, I've put together a supercut of a genre called design fiction. Typically, how these are made is a, is a creative agency somewhere gets a contract with a big technology company to show their future vision of the world and how them and their products fit into it. It's like corporate sponsored science fiction. They are soulless worlds where healthy, successful people go to work in empty offices, then go home to their shiny, expensive, but again, empty homes. Again, government isn't mentioned. But it's not that I think all software developers are neoliberals. In fact, it seems we're working hard to not notice. A few months ago, Bruce Sterling made a keynote address at Nextway Conference. It contains some harsh, harsh truths for the conference hall of eager entrepreneurs. I'll quote a bit to give you an idea. In the startup world, you work hard and you move fast to make other people rich. Other people. You are a small elite of very smart young people who are working hard for an even smaller elite of mostly baby boomer financiers. So, so they can buy national governments, shut the governments down, destroy the middle class and the nation state. That will be the judgment of history of our, your, startup culture. It was a tacit allegiance between the hackerspace purveyors of the startups and offshore capital and tax avoidance money laundries. 
we are all auto-colonialized by the austerity. There was basically no media coverage, and the audience seemed to stare down at their phones awkwardly, only laughing nervously at the most intense moments. On YouTube, it's currently only got about 1,200 views, unlike these videos, which managed to get millions upon millions. This is the dominant narrative for the future. I want to ask, why is this? Many of the developers I speak to shy away from politics. They comfort themselves with ideas, with the ideas of our community being meritocratic, that the good guys will win out over partisan and agenda-based politics because we are working towards a more logical, educated society. This is, of course, the same lie as the fully informed, rational consumer of market liber libera liberalization. They shrug when it's pointed out that we're nearly all white middle-class men. The discussions around women in technology have only just started, and boy, do they get defensive about it. And we haven't even begun discussing class-based privilege. So repellent is the idea of discussing something as political in our rational, meritocratic nirvana. Check your privilege is an idea that flies directly in the face of our self-narratives of the underdog nerd proving himself with his intelligence and well-meaning intentions. Our generation is generally adverse to ideologies. I don't have too much of a problem with this. I've found that ideologies often cause nothing but obstacles to those people who are actually trying to get things done. But as developers, we are both close to the ground and we have real power. In his short book, The New Kingmakers, Stephen O'Grady very effectively makes the case that software developers are just that. It's time we stop making toys for quite rich people to make very rich people even richer. So instead, I'm currently working at the Ministry of Justice, and I've been encouraging everyone I know in the industry to join the public sector. Our numbers are growing. Currently, in the UK Cabinet Office, the Government Digital Service has one of the best digital teams in the country and they're succeeding. It started life as a tiny team in a disused floor of a government building in South London, building a prototype to prove that it could be done. The watching civil servant said, that's nice, but it will never go live. They got funding to grow a beta with real plans, and with real plans of replacing DirectGov, the old government website. The watching civil servant said, that's nice, but it will never go live. One year ago this very week, DirectGov was turned off, and Gov.uk became the government's homepage. Last April, it won Design of the Year. Not the little printer. For reasons I won't go into, I found myself at a Tory bar called Maggie's with the Taxpayers' Alliance the very next day. I got chatting with them about Gov.uk's award. The amount of disgust expressed at me by them surprised me. In my sheltered world, I had never met anyone who had such a negative opinion of Gov.uk. Intrigued, I spent the next half an hour trying to figure out why. I got a lot of emotions, but not a lot of sense. Words like, I don't like it, and I'm the customer, and I'm always right, were muttered, ignoring the huge amounts of user research, testing, and iterative improvements that were made. They didn't, seem, they didn't even seem to care that it was proving that we could save millions, if not billions, of taxpayers' money, surely their favorite subject. I have a suspicion. I suspect that the idea of the public sector not only doing something well, but better than most of the private sector offends them. Turns out that the best way to piss off market libertarians is to make government work. Sure, I hear moans from Silicon Roundabout, which is East London tech city, that the government is sucking up all of the best talent. But while they're busy moaning about that, Gov.uk managed to increase sign-ups to the organ donations register by 10,000 every month with just one link that they did a clever bit of A-B testing as a side project. I could be working on your, sure, I could be working on your social network that tries to convince parents that fruit shoot isn't bad for your kids, and I have actually done that. Or I could be doing what I'm doing now, helping bring real change to the Office of Public Guardian so they can do their job better. The Office of Public Guardian provides support for those caring for someone who has lost mental capacity, whilst checking up on that care to make sure that they aren't abusing their position. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the software developer community. I love being a part of it, and I'm constantly excited about what we are doing. But I'm also frustrated. We seem to have been coerced into working for a future that we didn't sign up for. But hopefully, as anger amongst my generation grows at the world that has been handed to us, maybe more of us will realize that 
We may not have the money, but we hold the tools of technology. Those are some thoughts. As I mentioned, I didn't have a neatly packaged conclusion, but I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you very much. <laughs>